Greetings, I'm Kelly, 31 years old, and I'm currently trying to wrap my head around recent events in my life. My family has always been a bit tumultuous, and recently things have taken a challenging turn. But before I get into the nitty-gritty, let me share some background. I had a fairly typical upbringing. My parents and I were easygoing, except for my older sister, Patricia. She's a whole different ballgame. Patricia, where do I even begin with her? Picture a chaotic tornado causing upheaval in our family. You've heard stories about an unusual family member. Patricia took it to a completely different level. Always the nonconformist, breaking every rule and doing things her way. Our parents struggled to rein her in, no matter how earnestly they attempted. Late night gatherings, questionable friendships, romantic involvements, and general defiance of authority and responsibility became her distinguishing features. However, the true bombshell dropped when she became entangled with a married man. Yes, you heard correctly, a significant betrayal that fractured our family. The scandal was so extensive that it garnered national attention. Instead of choosing any married man, she opted for one with a considerable public profile. Trust was demolished, hearts were shattered, and it transformed into a chaotic situation. Things took a turn for the worse after that. Patricia started making some really bad decisions, going to wild parties, taking more risks, and pushing away anyone who tried to be close to her. She even got involved in some illegal substance abuse, which still bothers me today. It was like witnessing a slow-motion disaster, and we were all left shocked. Our parents couldn't bear the pain. They distanced themselves from Patricia, not because they stopped caring, but to protect their well-being. Can you blame them? It became a matter of preserving their sanity. At that point, I was upset with my older sister. I used to admire her, but she repeatedly betrayed my trust and hurt me, blaming me or involving me in her irresponsible actions. I tried many times to repair my connection with her, but she always turned down my attempts. She only reached out when she needed money for drugs or a place to stay. Eventually, I officially ended the relationship, following my parents' example. I didn't want to be taken advantage of for her benefit. Sadly, a few years later, my father passed away suddenly. It saddened me deeply because he didn't get the chance to bid farewell to one of his distant children. Despite our challenging past, I attempted to contact Patricia with the aspiration that, amidst the family tragedy, we could set aside our disagreements. I believed it could be an opportunity for our family to unite in the face of loss. Unfortunately, my expectations were shattered when I invited her to the funeral. Her response felt like a painful blow. She asserted that she had more important things to do and couldn't be bothered to attend our own father's funeral. Frustration and anger consumed me, and I implored her to momentarily set aside her self-centeredness and pay tribute to our father's memory by being present at the funeral. However, Patricia, staying true to her usual lack of interest, laughed off my request. She rejected the notion, making it clear that she had her own life to lead. That moment became the tipping point for me. I felt silly for thinking she could change, I decided right then and there that I no longer wished to see or hear from her. Losing our father had already been a painful event, and her lack of compassion only made the grief worse. I tried explaining to her that it wasn't about her, but about showing respect and uniting as a family during our time of loss. Yet she ignored my plea, ridiculing the idea of participating in a family gathering. You know what? Okay, if you don't want to come, that's fine. I wasn't expecting you to be there anyway. It's pretty clear that you only think about yourself, not others. Suit yourself, Kelly. Enjoy the morning with Dad without me. That's my plan as well. After everything is said and done, don't count on hearing from me again. I'm done. Whatever, Kelly. Goodbye. And just like that, the call ended. I felt a mix of anger and disappointment, along with the sadness of losing our father. It was evident that Patricia's absence would create a gap. Yet at that moment... I realized it was a gap I needed to come to terms with forever. On the day of the funeral, everyone gathered to say their last goodbyes, but Patricia was still missing. I informed my mom about our disagreement, and she assured me she would handle it. Unfortunately, her efforts didn't succeed, and Patricia remained elusive. Witnessing the absence of a sister who should have been there for support during such a difficult time was painful. After the burial, my mom and I, along with close friends and family, returned home to continue the funeral. Instead of the intended quiet mourning, an unexpected and dreadful event unfolded as something horrifying burst through the door. She entered clumsily and donned a vibrant pink short dress that clashed with the dark and serious atmosphere. It seemed like she had just come from a wild party, appearing completely intoxicated. To make matters worse, she began babbling incoherently, aggravating an already difficult situation. 
Patricia staggered into the room, clearly inebriated. In her unsteady state, she accidentally knocked over some glasses, creating chaos by breaking them. The situation turned chaotic, and I couldn't tolerate it any longer. We engaged in a heated argument, drawing attention with our shouting and making everyone uncomfortable. Seriously, Patricia, what are you thinking? This is not the right time or place for your drunken antics. Oh, come on, Kelly. Let's not be so gloomy. Dad wouldn't want us all sulking. Let's celebrate his life for goodness sake. Celebrate? Seriously? Do you realize how wrong this is? Show some decency for once. Talking about respect is so simple for you. It comes naturally. You've always been the one who follows the rules, haven't you? Don't even think about starting an argument with me, Patricia. Our voices collided, carrying frustration and two years of unresolved anger. The atmosphere in the room was heavy, and it seemed like our relationship had reached its lowest point. Just when it seemed like things couldn't get any worse, our mom intervened, pulling both of us into my room, attempting to salvage some dignity and have a private conversation. Ladies, it's time for a serious conversation. Let's communicate like grown-ups and try to find some common understanding. Okay, let's have a chat, but don't expect everything to be perfect. Suddenly, my mom and I heard Patricia sobbing. I apologize, Mom. Kelly, I've messed up many times. You're aware that I need serious help. Dad's passing made me realize how truly lost and lonely I've been. I've missed you guys for a long time. But my pride and stubbornness held me back. I'm a mess, and everyone knows it. However, I desire improvement. I aim to make positive changes. It could be challenging to mend things with Dad at this point, but I remain optimistic that there's still time for us. My mom was visibly moved by her statement. Despite my parents' decision to sever ties with her two years ago, it was evident that, as a mother, the separation from her child was causing her immense pain. I required some persuasion. Yet witnessing my sister's distressed expression, whether it was a reflection of her struggles, her situation, or both, prompted me to soften as well. Ultimately, I told Patricia, honestly, I'm unsure if I can trust you anymore. However, witnessing you admit your mistakes is a positive beginning. The heaviness of our shared history lifted as we embraced, tears rolling down our cheeks. It marked a poignant moment of coming together, a delicate connection constructed over years of pain and misinterpretations. In that instance, I understood that despite the difficulties, families can discover healing and extend forgiveness. Following the funeral, Patricia's circumstances appeared to get better. She chose to return home to mom, and for some time, it seemed like she was making good improvements in her life. Mom would call me now and then, sharing updates and expressing her joy about Patricia's advancements. It felt like a small spark of optimism. Yet, right when we believed everything was calming down, mom phoned me one day in a state of panic. Her voice conveyed worry and distress, suggesting that a significant issue had arisen. I inquired about the situation, and she told me that Patricia had vanished, taking Dad's credit cards, jewelry, and clothes, and even raiding the pantry. Mom discovered a note from her, and we were clueless about her whereabouts. I was astonished. After everything that had occurred, Patricia pulled off another trick like this. Mom worried about the credit cards and the possibility of significant debts. I comforted her, advising her to relax, and emphasized that, as the representative of Dad's estate, it was my duty to safeguard his assets. I assured mom that I would quickly reach out to the credit card companies to disable dad's account as promised. Mom appreciated my assistance and felt upset about Patricia's actions. I recognized the challenge we faced but reassured her that we would overcome it together. Mom expressed her gratitude, highlighting the significance of family unity in challenging moments. Regretting my trust in Patricia once more, I was committed to preventing her from causing more pain to the family. Although I wished to cling to optimism, it felt like a futile endeavor. Patricia had deeply hurt mom, and I was determined to make sure she faced the repercussions of her actions. It was disheartening to have to shield the family from someone within our ranks. In my eyes, Patricia was no longer a part of my life, and I was thankful that she had legally distanced herself from us by changing her name two years ago. I was relieved to see her go. I was taken aback when my mom spoke these words. It looked like she had finally reached a point of no return. Even though it was startling to see her act like this, it helped me understand. She explained that Patricia changed her name two years ago in a rebellious move to separate herself from us. It had been three months since Patricia's surprising disappearance and her hurtful act of taking things from mom and dad. I was shocked to see her displaying a fancy lifestyle on social media, buying things with stolen credit cards. And to make matters worse, she began tagging mom and me in her posts, as if she wanted us to witness her carefree and extravagant life. 
Patricia was definitely trying to grab our attention, constantly mentioning us in every post to annoy us. However, we chose not to lower ourselves to her level, understanding that interacting with her would only boost her confidence and support her attention-seeking methods. We stayed quiet, opting not to recognize her actions in any way. Then, unexpectedly, Patricia gave me a call. I was unsure about answering, but my curiosity took over. She seemed self-satisfied and full of herself, teasing me for not acknowledging her posts or commenting on her excessive spending. Despite this, I remained composed, refusing to give her the pleasure of a reaction. Hey Kelly, it's been a while. I've noticed you've been quiet lately, not really engaging with my posts. Hey Patricia, yeah, I've been busy with more important stuff. Your posts didn't really grab my attention. She seemed annoyed. What's up with you? Why are you so calm about everything? You should be mad at me. Listen, Patricia, your actions speak for themselves. I'm not letting your behavior control my emotions. I've decided to focus on honoring Dad's memory rather than getting caught up in your reckless behavior. Patricia started yelling and throwing insults, but I chose not to respond. I chose not to retaliate. I allowed her to have her diva moment, knowing a harsh reality awaited her. Thinking she's superior, she learned I spent a hefty $50,000 on Dad's credit cards. I chuckled, realizing she was plunging further into anger. Patricia's attempt to provoke me failed. Her actions only reflected poorly on her. I've moved beyond letting her behavior affect me. My focus is on safeguarding Dad's legacy and finding inner peace. Good luck with your rainbow promises when you and Mom struggle to pay off my debts. I feel sorry for you, Patricia. You have no idea what you've done. She huffed and puffed, claiming I had no clue. In reality, it was her who was clueless. I explained how, since she ransacked our parents' place, I began the account deletion process after Dad's passing. The credit card companies warned against using the card during this time. I assured them Mom and I wouldn't use it. Any activity would be from a fraudster or thief. She was shocked when I revealed there was another person in the family. You're not part of this family, she retorted. My words hit her hard, leaving her speechless for the first time. Despite her ability to talk endlessly, she had no response. What do you mean I'm not part of this family, she stammered. Let me clarify, Patricia. You've consistently mentioned that you don't care about us and prefer to be on your own. Was your intention all along to change your name and deliberately cause us pain while we were grieving? Now you're quiet, huh? By the way, I notified the bank that if any strange things happen after I ask to close the account, they should handle it correctly since it has nothing to do with mom and me. All right, what's going on? When you can't settle the debt, and let's face it, you probably won't. You'll end up dealing with the authorities. Kelly, why did you betray me? Patricia, how could you do this to me and your own mom? Do you understand how much you're hurting dad, who can't even relax because of you? Are you not aware of how self-centered you're being? So, I'm the bad guy in this situation, huh? That's what everyone always mentioned. Why didn't you inform the police earlier? Why am I learning about all of this just now? Because witnessing your fall from grace would be more satisfying, dear. I didn't want to warn you in advance. I wanted you to be taken by surprise. But now there's no use. You should be aware that your time of freedom is running out, and soon you'll be in prison without any escape. Patricia began sobbing during our phone call, and I remained silent, patiently waiting for the emotional moment to pass. But I can't repay this. I'll end up in jail. You should have considered that before engaging in those foolish actions. Kelly, I apologize sincerely. Keep it. I don't want to hear more from you. I never want to receive a message from you again. And just so you know, the color of prison does not suit you at all. Upon ending the call before her response, I broke into a joyous dance, anticipating Patricia's imminent arrest. Fortune favored me, as Patricia was apprehended the following day. Reports from the local gossip mill hinted at her spirited resistance, vehemently refuting all charges, even in the face of the discovery of a substantial quantity of drugs in her residence. Her continuous refusal to accept the truth made her situation worse, prompting the judge to extend her sentence after she finally admitted her guilt. I find it puzzling why some confess when the evidence is clear. Anyway, my mom and I rejoiced when we heard Patricia's decision, looking forward to a few years of calm before any potential trouble. I hoped that Patricia's time in jail would help her become more disciplined and positive. Sadly, it seems that having a well-behaved Patricia might be hard to achieve, as she caused trouble in her cell, even using violence against other prisoners. The judge cautioned that her disobedience could lead to more three years added to her sentence. My mom and I have made a firm choice to leave this part of our lives behind. We've stopped answering calls from the prison, choosing not to communicate with her because we're worried she might try to come back into our lives. 
We're even thinking about moving to another state to create some space from her impact. This decision isn't just about preventing any possible future meetings. It's also about giving my mom a new beginning after dad's passing. It's sad how things turned out for Patricia, but I feel comfort in having gotten back at her for what happened before. I'm satisfied knowing that her own foolish choices led to her downfall. Whether she understands the consequences or not, I've reached a point where she no longer matters to me in any manner.